A little while back on this channel, I did a video talking about who, in my opinion, should win the 2017 Royal Rumble. My ultimate answer was Big E for a variety of reasons, and I stand by those reasons. The need to create a new star, and usually that's what you want to do at the Royal Rumble. The thought process of being he's going to be different than a lot of your other champions for a variety of reasons, but one in particular that we all know of that I will no longer discuss because it's been discussed ad nauseum by me and others. But you also look at it from a character progression standpoint, too. You're coming off of the New Day, uh, setting a record for longest WWE Tag Team Championship reign in history, breaking Demolition's old record. So when you talk about progressing characters and moving them up the card, you know, you've trusted them to carry your tag titles for over a year, made them into one of the best acts in your company, one of your biggest draws in the company, one of your biggest merch movers in the company, the next natural transition would be, in theory, to that main event scene. And ultimately, when I look at the other options for WWE, a lot of them, I think they stink. And I think it's ridiculous that so many people have shit on me for the Big E winning the Rumble thought process, but then they'll float out idiots like Finn Balor or Sami Zayn. I mean, good Christ. I think we can all agree that Roman Reigns doesn't need to win the Royal Rumble, for God's sake. But... You know, it's just a thought. And I still stand by it. And if ultimately that's the direction the WWE went, I'd be happy with it. And I'd be eager to see what they did with Big E as the Rumble winner heading into WrestleMania. It would definitely give me a little bit of a kickstart in terms of interest in the product again. It's not going to be the be-all, end-all. It's not going to be a cure. It's not going to fix everything. It's not even going to be that they necessarily would do things with Big E well. It would just, to me, in some ways, represent something different. It would represent a change. Now, ultimately, I don't believe that's the direction the company is going. I don't think that's the direction the company is going. And if that's not the direction they're going, I'm not exactly going to shit on them for that. I'll shit on them more for the fact of they really didn't create a situation where they give me a clear-cut option for the Royal Rumble winner. If I look at this year's show, looking at the full-time roster, I don't see anybody that's worth a damn to actually win the Rumble. I really don't. I just don't see where anybody should win it. And that's a problem, because the Royal Rumble is ultimately that beginning point on the road to WrestleMania. And the Royal Rumble can do a lot to help increase the interest in WrestleMania, because ultimately, the most important thing about the Royal Rumble is the Royal Rumble match. And who will ultimately get that title shot at WrestleMania? So you can't just sleep on this. It's important. You got to hit, and you got to hit big. And some years the company does, and ultimately some years they don't. But looking at the 2017 Royal Rumble, WWE is doing a little something different this time. They did it 20 years ago. They're doing it again. It's going to be in San Antonio, Texas at the Alamo Dome. So they're going to be trying to draw like 60,000 people. They're going to try and treat the Royal Rumble like the Big Four pay-per-view it deserves to be treated as, and therefore putting it in a stadium, which is where all of their Big Four shows should ultimately be long-term. And I, I agree with that, and I applaud them for that. Um, so you look at it and you say, is it, you got to do well. you got to be able to justify potentially creating a Royal Rumble type of week, creating a situation where you can go year in and year out and have cities not just been on WrestleMania, but ultimately the Royal Rumble and having this service kind of a, like a test run for in the future being able to do the same thing with SummerSlam and Survivor Series. You know, from a business standpoint, it would behoove them as a company, the WWE, to hit and hit big on this. So when I think about the 2017 Royal Rumble... You're in Texas, you're in the Alamo Dome, you want to give people something to remember. And you want to give yourself a real shot of adrenaline on the road to WrestleMania. To me, the way it sits right now heading into 2017, the way it stands, there's only one option that could really do that. There's only one option in terms of who could win the Rumble match that could really accomplish those things. And that is The Undertaker. You know, when you think about The Undertaker, for my money, 
while I think Hulk Hogan is the biggest star in the history of the professional wrestling business, and the only person that could hold his jock is probably Vince McMahon, in terms of a WWE superstar, all of you that believe that it's Shawn Michaels like the company did for whatever reason, for politics or whatever, can blow it out your ass. The Undertaker is beyond question the greatest superstar in WWE history. Two and a half decades plus later, and the hits keep on rolling. Now, granted, it's not in a full-time capacity anymore, but for two decades it was. He's earned the right to be a part-timer if he so desires. He doesn't have to do this anymore. He does. And when you look at The Undertaker, you know, once you broke the streak at WrestleMania 30, in a lot of ways, Taker ceased to have a purpose to appear at WrestleMania anymore. Now, ultimately, he has. He wrestled Bray Wyatt at 31. He wrestled Shane McMahon at 32. You know, you could say in some ways that helps elevate the importance of Brock Lesnar beating him, but it's kind of like, eh, you kind of create situations now where The Undertaker wrestles at WrestleMania. If he wins, the company really doesn't get anything from it. And if he loses, the company doesn't get anything from it. You're creating a year-in-year-out lose-lose situation that benefits no one. And you shouldn't be doing that with the greatest superstar of all time. You just shouldn't. You want to be able to take whatever appearances you have left, whatever shows you have left, and whatever matches you have left in his body, and make the most out of them. That's what a smart company does. That's what a good business would do. Maximize the ROI, the return on investment from all these years. And to me, when you're looking at creating a moment that would cement the Royal Rumble as not just being, you know, the big four pay-per-view it has been for so many years, but being a show that is worthy of a stadium every year, the Rumble winner that is most likely to produce that feeling is The Undertaker. Now, some are going to sit there and talk about, you know, utilizing the Rumble winner um, spot for a younger dude to help elevate them, and that'll get thrown in my face, I'm sure, and, and I understand that. And a lot of years, that's the direction I would ultimately choose to go. But it doesn't always have to be the option. If the best story for that title match at WrestleMania involves a veteran and established guy winning the Rumble, then that's the direction you go. And that's worked in the past, like Randy Orton in 2009, you know, before God cemented his, his supremacy in that horrible main event at 25. You know, Randy Orton winning the Rumble was predictable, but it was the right decision. It was the right way to go based off of the story they were trying to tell between him and Hunter at WrestleMania 25. And I look at The Undertaker, and I say, a lot of the signs point to him facing off with John Cena at WrestleMania. And I look at that match, and I say, that's the big match. That's the money match. While there's money to be made in a Brock Lesnar-Goldberg rematch, the true money, the true draw of this show, WrestleMania 33, would be John Cena versus The Undertaker. I don't think anybody disputes it. Even the people that don't want to see it know that this would be the attraction for this show. And when you look at The Undertaker, you only have so many shows, so many appearances, so many matches left out of them. You don't want to look back 10, 15, 20 years from now and say, hey, I wish we would have done John Cena versus The Undertaker. You've waited this many years. The stars are aligned. The timing is right. The timing is now. This is the direction to go. And in my opinion, the best way to make sure that this match is a win-win situation all the way around is to have it be for the WWE title. Now, sure, some will sit there and point to things I've said in the past, talking about you know you don't necessarily need to have the Undertaker wrestle for the title at WrestleMania. You use the title for one match, Taker for another. You know, I get that. And I've also said in the past that, you know, in my opinion, it's more important to face Taker at WrestleMania than it is wrestle for the world title. Especially now with the brand split, you have two world titles. You only have one Undertaker. And especially when the streak was alive. People win and lose the WWE and World Heavyweight Championships every year at WrestleMania. Nobody ever beats Taker. If I won the Royal Rumble, why the hell would I want a world title shot? I want a chance to beat the icon the phenom, the legend of legends, the greatest of all time, and the Undertaker. That's who I want. You know, think about that. If you want to truly establish your greatness, do you want to win the world title that people like Miz and Finn Balor and so many others have won, the World Heavyweight Championships, the great Khalis of the world and all that? 
or do you want to have the chance to beat The Undertaker or WrestleMania? And just looking at it from a storyline standpoint, the best way to get to John Cena versus The Undertaker to be is starting at the Royal Rumble. You have John Cena beat AJ Styles. Now you've got the 16-time world champion. Now you can start having Cena kind of buy into and promote the BS of him being the best ever. You could have AJ Styles serve as a nice segue between Cena and Undertaker, talking about he's still the face that runs the place. Cena got lucky it was a fluke. You could have Cena sit there and talk about how he, he is the place. He is the man. He is the gold standard of WWE. He is the one that everybody has to come through. All the while, at the Royal Rumble, just picture this. You get towards the end, and you got the first 28 or so people come through. And you're left in the ring with, let's say, I'm just spitballing this. You've got Lesnar, Goldberg, uh, all three members of the Shield, the Wyatt families out there. And then number 29 hits, and it's Kane. And you have Kane come out, and everybody's kind of going at it. And then something happens along the way where Brock Lesnar eliminates Goldberg. Brock Lesnar starts to mock Goldberg. And then all of a sudden, number 30 comes, and the gong hits. Could you imagine the fucking reaction when that gong hits? And the looks on everybody's faces, especially Brock Lesnar selling the fact that while I just sat there and eliminated Goldberg, here comes the fucking Undertaker. Now all the while, you've got Kane in there, so you could do some Brothers of Destruction nostalgia shit, and you can ultimately get to that point in time where Goldberg could even run a small distraction to help Taker, eliminate Lester, get one last up on the guy who ended his streak, and now Taker could sit there and deny Lesnar a shot at the world title at WrestleMania. Now you're off with Lesnar and Goldberg doing their own thing, and now you've got The Undertaker sitting there, and here's the guy who's going to get a title shot at WrestleMania. You know, all these years, Taker's only won the Rumble one time, that was 2007. So now you sit there maybe the SmackDown after the Royal Rumble. You know, with the Shield and Wyatt family, you could do maybe different things. And frankly, I just threw their names in there. Who even fucking cares about them at this point? Because it's not about them, and who gives a shit? But now you get that confrontation between Cena and AJ Styles and talking about some of the things I was talking about. And again, all of a sudden, the gong hits. And out comes The Undertaker. And just a simple, friendly reminder that Regardless of what happens between those two guys at the next pay-per-view, The Undertaker's got next at WrestleMania. So now you can sit there and get to WrestleMania, and you've got John Cena as the WWE Champion. You've got The Undertaker as the number one contender. You know, when you want to put Undertaker in positions to succeed, you want to have potentially a big-name opponent. You want to maximize that drawing power. On top of that, you want a veteran that knows what he's doing, that can work with Taker, that can protect Taker. And John Cena could potentially do that, believe it or not. Furthermore, you don't want to confuse or divide the audience in any way. As much as possible, you'd like it to be as pro-Taker as possible. Well, even though the streak's no longer on the line, I assure you, if it's John Cena versus The Undertaker at WrestleMania, for that match, Cena is clearly working as the heel. And he's in a great place working as a heel. It's not going to throw him off. He understands it. He knows how to work with it. Taker could be the face and the dynamics work. And no matter where you go, whether you sit there and you have Cena win that match and he retains his title, you know, it gets somebody um, else in the picture and people will get behind them because now they're pissed at Cena beat Taker at WrestleMania after all these fucking years. Now we want somebody to hurry up and take the strap off of Cena. Or on the flip side, you know, one thing we don't do very well in the WWE is nostalgia runs and nostalgia championship runs. Like a few years ago, people were so pissed when The Rock beat CM Punk for the title. That should have been like that last kind of nostalgia run with the title belt. That should have been something to enjoy. That should have been a story that was done very, very well. Of course, ultimately it wasn't, but here's a chance to do that what if scenario, that one last time, that one last ride, if you will. You could do that with The Undertaker. Why not have him win the belt? You had him come on SmackDown talking about how WrestleMania is no longer going to find his career. You, know, you could do the part time championship. It's The Undertaker. If he doesn't want to defend every pay per view, then he doesn't have to defend every pay per view. 
You could excuse that shit with Brock Lesnar. I'll most certainly be able to excuse it with The Undertaker, who's a thousand times better than Brock Lesnar could ever dream to be. It's just, I was just sitting and thinking about it the other day. And it's just like, I came through the shining light. The Red Sea parted, and I'm like, oh my god. The answer has been staring me in the face the whole time. There is an option to win the Royal Rumble. And frankly to me, it's the only option. It's the dead man. It's the undertaker. It's the way it should be. It's the way it needs to be. And in my opinion, it's the way it has to be. You want to get the most out of John Cena in the 16th World Championship run? You want to get the most out of Undertaker potentially appearing multiple times on the road to WrestleMania? This is the way you do it. Just imagine the gong hitting at number 30 and out comes the Undertaker. Just imagine that next Tuesday on SmackDown with Cena and Styles in the ring, out comes The Undertaker. Then Undertaker, you don't even have to have appear until the night after that next pay-per-view, the one in between Rumble and WrestleMania, whatever the hell it is right now, I can't even remember. And now it's John Cena and it's Undertaker face-to-face. -face. Don't even need to say a fucking word. It's a look and it's a point at the sign and it's a bitches, we'll see you the rest of the way. Could be incredible. I want to talk about rejuvenating and revitalizing my interest in WWE? John Cena Undertaker has so many natural storytelling elements built in, and you've got these two veterans that Vince and the creative team can't completely fucking screw up. I don't see how the company could get this story wrong even if they tried. And even if the story, in theory, they did do a bad job with and they did screw it up. It's still got that special feeling of, oh my God, these guys have never faced at WrestleMania. And at the end of the day, we don't get that nearly enough in today's WWE. Those unique feeling matches at the big shows, especially WrestleMania, the biggest show of them all. What better, more unique attraction WrestleMania match could you possibly have than John Cena versus The Undertaker? And then you throw in the WWE Championship on top of that? Sign me up for that shit. Taker has to be the dude to win the Royal Rumble in San Antonio next month, in my opinion.